Hello friends, hi, my name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and are quite critical of it. Today, you're joining me on another installation of my art inspired shop my stash video series, in which I choose a painting, shop my makeup collection and do a look inspired by it. This series aims to educate, inspire and force me to um, use my makeup in new and interesting ways. Today I'm trying a new video format, we're going to start with what I pick and chose for my collection, then the look and a little voiceover. Please let me know if you like this style or if you want me to go back to the old one. The painting that I want to do a look inspired by with all of these products is Monet Le Grand Canal, which is an impressionist painting. We're going to be talking a bit about impressionism. Okay, let's start with what I chose and I'm going to begin with the boring stuff and that is the base. For base I chose the Espresso Dewy Latte which is relatively new to my collection. I honestly think this would fit better someone that doesn't have a dry skin type like me, someone more combo, more oily. It's nice and hydrating but it doesn't quite do it for me the way other hydrating sort of primey serum-y skincare type of primers do it. But I enjoy it and I will pan it but I probably won't repurchase. The foundation that I'm using is a combination. So both the espresso foundation and the Catrice tinted serum didn't work for me um, in various ways. The um, espresso is a bit too heavy on my dry skin, the Catrice tinted serum is too light. So I mixed both to kind of like make something out of it to get you know, to get my money's worth. It's fine, it's mostly like a filming photo foundation because the camera is more forgiving. It's not as perfecting as my holy grail, which is the Makeup Forever Reboot. Like with this, I feel like I'm wearing a foundation, right? With the Reboot, I don't. This is the uh, powder that I'm going to use and it's the Zessy British Museum powder, which is a very finely milled, beautiful, silky powder, one of my favorites in my collection. For concealer, I'm using one of my drugstore holy grails and this is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage. I specifically chose this shade to be a bit darker and a bit more peachy than what I normally use to counter out my vampiric under eye circles. And this is in O10 Porcelain. Let's get the most boring stuff out of the way. For brows, I'm going to use a random black eye pencil. This is from Essence. Brow mascara from Delia, which I do not recommend because even though it's just a beautiful ashy dark blackish color It's got a lot of splashback like a lot of area of effect damage because it's very liquidy and the applicator is so thick for the bottle that it's in the moment in which you open it you get sprinkled with dark specks I even let it out to dry for like a couple of days and it's just It's manageable now, so I will not pre-purchase it the Monsieur Bag used to be my um, Holy Grail mascara. This is a very thick volumizing mascara. I think the formula changed. Or maybe the large size is not as good as the mini because this is very liquidy, very thick and I always need to press it down on a napkin before using it, which I'm not a fan of at this price point. For blush, this is a bit of a catfish. This is a Kiko packaging that I repurposed because it didn't like the blush inside, but I really like how pretty this is. And it's got inside the Etude House Lavender Chiffon Cake, my one lavender blush, which was the opposite. I liked the product, I didn't like the packaging because it was quite bulky. This I'm using because I want to recreate those soft purple tones in the atmosphere in the painting itself and I'm really really excited to use this again. For highlighter I am going to use the Romand Moon Kissed Veil. It's got a sticker on top but that's not the original. This is a very beautiful pinky subtle highlight, very reflective without being you know 2016 highlightery. Really lovely and again mimicking those rosy purplish tones in the painting. I am going to use two single shadows and these are the Pupa Vamp Wet and Dry in 410 for 17. These are interesting, these are not very high impact, these are more pastel than they look in the packaging and they go more towards satin shimmers rather than the glittery sparkly topper shimmers that I go for. I'm still deciding whether I love them or not but maybe in a look, um, you know, evoking the blue of the water and the slight purple tint of the water, I might fall in love with them or decide what to do with them. But right now I really do enjoy them, just not as much as my topper shades. I am also going to be using the Milani Gilded Flora, which is a really pretty drugstore palette. This is how she looks like on the inside. I think this is really good. It's nice. It's just not as nice as my indie shadows. However, 
uh, if you don't have any India shadows available or you're not willing to uh, deal with the shipment and the delays and or they're just simply not accessible to you but you do have Milani, I think this is a nice colorful shimmery duochromy palette. These have been my makeup picks. Let's see what I managed to do with them because I, I always ad lib the looks. I don't plan them out in the beginning. So we'll see if this look inspired by Monet Le Grand Canal is going to be a flop or a really good one. Today we are talking about Claude Monet Le Grand Canal and Impressionism in general. There were many Impressionists, but arguably Monsieur Claude was their daddy. His most known paintings were the ones with water lilies, but I found Le Grand Canal more inspiring for my makeup style. We have to begin by explaining what Impressionism is and in which contest it appeared. Art, like politics, is often an ebb and flow, current and countercurrent. You will often have one art form spring up in opposition of the current existing one, and that's precisely what happened with Impressionism. Impressionism was born in the 19th century as a response to the realistic, precise artwork of its time, which focused on historical and religious themes and required a degree of technical finesse and attention to realistic rendering. It was characterized by loose, small and visible brushstrokes, an open composition, an emphasis on light and mood as it was perceived, and not necessarily how it was um, realistic for it to be. The style got its name from a title of Claude Monet's work, Impression Soleil Levant, so you can imagine he was very much one of the most important figureheads of the movement. In the early 1860s, four art students, whose names might be familiar to you, realized that they had quite a few things in common aside from whatever the equivalent of college students were doing back then. The students were Claude Monet, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and Frederick Brazil. And they were all lovers of painting landscapes in plein air, that is outside, and of contemporary life rather than the then popular historical or mythological scenes. You'd think painting a lily pond wasn't so radical, but at the time going against what was the style favored by haughty art critics and fancy art academics was pretty much revolutionary. You either painted by the status quo or you were shunned from art galleries and your work was deemed less worthy. So in their time, these four mad lads were considered revolutionaries, violating the rules of academic painting. They constructed their paintings from free brush strokes, not lines and contours, painted a lot outdoors, focusing on the transient effect of light and landscape and flow. They portrayed overall visual effects instead of details and used short broken brush strokes of mixed and pure unmixed color not blended smoothly or shaded, highly rendered, um, created in a workshop or a studio as was customary. Impressionism was a way of seeing and transposing on paper the feeling you get when being outside and looking at a beautiful scene, as opposed to trying to convey a scenario or achieving a realistic depiction of what was seen. They were going out and about, painting, meeting at a cafe, debating art, doing more painting, and eventually they were joined by more and more people, including another well-known name, Paul Cezanne. However, because they were going against the flow so much, it's needless to say that these guys were rejected from salons, that is galleries, left and right, by snobby curators who didn't like their deviation from the approved style. At the time, salons were an artist's bread and butter. Your work wasn't up in a salon, you were a nobody. However, as Monet and his gang was becoming more and more popular, so was the public becoming a bit more pissed off at them being snapped by these salons. The tensions rose up until a point where Napoleon III, presumably tired from running around on his little legs conquering places, decided to get into this drama and give the public their due. He opened the Salon de Refuse, the Gallery of Rejects, where rejected standard salon paintings were exhibited. It was great success with the public, but unfortunately the salon didn't continue in the years to come. The Impressionists took matter in their own hands and created the, um, their own association called the Société Anonyme Coopérative des Artistes, Painters, Sculptors, Graveurs, Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painters, Sculptors and Engravers, and this was to exhibit their artworks independently. In a total, 30 artists participated in the first exhibition held in April 1874, including 
Monet, Renoir, Pizarro, Sisley, Cezanne, Bert Morisot, Edgar Degas, and other famous names. The critical response was mixed, messy, one could say. I mentioned earlier that the current got its name from one of Monet's paintings. But what I didn't see was the juicy detail that this was initially meant to be an insult. A salty critic insulted the works, especially Monet's, saying that they were unfinished. Quote, Impression. I was certain of it. I was telling myself that since I was impressed, there had to be some impression in it. And what freedom, what ease of workmanship. Wallpaper in its embryonic state is more finished than that ski seascape. I mean, how shady. Well, Monsieur Critic humorist Louis Leroy is certainly turning into his grave like a Beyblade at how popular these unfinished artworks actually are nowadays. Our band of artists ran with it and started calling themselves Impressionists. The public loved their work as much as critics and art snobs hated it, and soon enough, in the zeitgeist, their style of painting started being associated with modernity, a new way of living and seeing things. However, infighting in the group started soon enough. People came and left, some even defected to start showing their works in the salon. Inevitably, as Impressionism gathered more and more popularity, their work started being the norm and they started being exposed in salons. There were also female Impressionists, but unfortunately they were limited by the idiotic patriarchal society that they were living in. They had many social and career limitations compared to their male counterparts and were often not considered smart enough or good enough, so even their te teachers limited what they were showing and telling them, stunting their growth as artists. Despite these hurdles, several women were able to find success in their lifetime, even though their careers were still affected by personal circumstance, such as resentful husbands, domestic duties. I mean, this is kind of the sad truth of women in the past. There were women artists, but they were always held back, stopped, sabotaged by circumstance and by men, by lack of accessibility and by lack of education, by lack of consideration and respect of their fullness as human beings. The four most well-known female impressionists were Marie Cazat, Eva Gonzalez, Marie Bracmont, and Beth Morisot. What's very interesting is that their subjects were very often women, both commanding of their environment but somewhat confined by it, offering an intimate view of life through the lens of feminine impressionism. For a long time, women impressionist artists weren't even mentioned in the history of impressionism, but thankfully that changed in about the 1950s. In any case, impressionism is a beautiful art style and honestly by far one of my favorites. I wish I were able to paint in an impressionist style, but I'm most comfortable with more graphic work with a heavier line art. Going back to the topic of today's makeup look, um, the painting Le Grand Canal by Claude Monet. Monet was in love with painting outdoors from an early age. His favorite subject was the French countryside, and he often went back again and again and again and again over the years to capture the same place changing with the seasons and with different lighting conditions. Among the best examples are his series of water lilies in his garden in Giverny that occupied him continuously for the last 20 years of his life, his series of haystacks that he focused on in 18, between 1819 and 1891, and paintings of the Rouen Cathedral in he worked on those for a whole year in 94. This man was very much laser focused on painting one subject in the long, long term. For example, those water lilies paintings I mentioned, he has over 250 of those, and tens of others on various subjects each. Meanwhile, I can barely finish most sketches before barreling through to the next idea, like what do I need to do to get even a crumb of his attention span? Do I need to go and dig up his grave, leave an offering to his demon, hope a muse visits me? Uh, anyway, I digress. Speaking of Monet's body of work, Wildenstein said that it is so extensive that its very ambition and diversity challenges our understanding of its importance. This man painted a lot, painted well, and was so influential he's basically the backbone of a lot of the later art currents that appeared after Impressionism. 
Le Grand Canal is one of my favorite paintings by him because I'm always drawn to art of bodies of water and I like the ethereal airy look of the colors he chose. I can almost picture myself standing there looking at the crisp morning sun glittering on the water. This is one of six paintings looking down at the Grand Canal towards the Salute Church in Venice. I like this purple atmospheric one the most out of the lot. At the time, this was a fresh view of a landscape painted many, many times before him because it didn't focus on the architecture of a church. Clearly, this series of paintings focused more on a pictorial exploration of the light upon the ancient city, how the light shifted on the water and its surroundings, how it, the colors changed based on the weather conditions, as opposed to a detailed copy of the architectural wonders of the city. The poles in the front are used as a counterweight to the building in the distance, and the water seems to have been given more importance than the building itself. Arguably, Monet was more preoccupied with capturing the light rather than the sights and par known panoramas of Venice. He certainly avoided painting the residents and tourists in the city, and this absence of people gives another worldly impression. Not quite a liminal space, but close enough. And I think this is what Impressionism is all about, sensation. Not quite a liminal space, but enough to give you that sort of sensation. You look at an Impressionist painting and it makes you feel. They have a dreamlike quality where it's more real than realism because we, they look how we remember things, not how they actually are. This has been it for me regarding Impressionism and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was actually redone four times. I was never quite happy either with the look or the script or the audio quality. I tried using a mic, I tried using my camera, it was mayhem. It was a labor of love and stubbornness. Please let me know, know down in the comments below what your favorite impressionism painting is or your favorite artist in the genre and if you like this new format or if you want to go back to my kind of get ready chit chatty with me um, format for these. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful morning, evening, second breakfast, third lunch, or whatever it is you're from. Bye!